But for now, Oaks, we've been trying to get this together for a long time with Marijuana SA. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna chill, mm -hmm. get high, maybe shoot a question while we listen to why these Oaks are so enthusiastic about cannabis. Yeah. Let's do right. this. Are they coming in? Yeah. <laughs> cool, I'm just getting bombarded by the thread. This is yeah. all cool. Any good comments there, man? Um, <laughs> after a country's been at war and at odds with global politics, apartheid, damn, let the whole nation smoke it up and heal. Yeah. There you go. This Michael Bubble mind. says his little brain was mature at 13. Hello, guys. <laughs> Hello in Cape Town. How's it going? Hello, Dan. Hey. Hey. How's it going? We this side. We this side. Where's What's our camera? Up? Where's the camera there? Fantastic. Hello, oh, no, we're over here. We're, we're talking over, over here. That's so, right. have you been listening to the conversation, yeah? Yeah, we have been listening to the yeah. conversation. What? What? Uh, do you guys look, to me, being 60 years old, you guys look quite young. So, I reckon you've probably been smoking a couple of years which is way below the 18-year social norms for a legal <laughs> recreational intoxicant. So what time, yeah. when, did you, when did you guys start smoking? I started smoking when I was uh, just about to turn 16, actually, okay. so as, as a minor. <laughs> yeah. And quite heavily, so 16. I was definitely listening to the conversation and I've done my research, but um, you know, it was, I, was, I was super passionate about gardening at the time. And a friend of mine at school, he like, we were chatting the one day and I was telling him about gardening and all of a sudden he presented these seeds to me. And I was like, what is that? And he's like, it's weed. So I was like, no, but like, what is that? He's like, you can plant it, it's weed. So I planted them in the garden. And like nine months later, I had these like five meter trees. <laughs> and so I was like, look, I, and during the time I sort of went on this like absolute rabbit hole of learning. And by the end of it, I was like, you know, all that's left to do is to, is to smoke it. And I got quite a, quite into my smoking. And that sort of was the beginning of the beginning of the journey for me. And did, and did you have really lucky parents that understood why you were doing it? Do you come from a background of liberal parents? My parents at the beginning were incredibly uh, unsupportive. My mom was horrified. <laughs> it took a lot of it took a lot of convincing to get them to just let me keep them in the in the garden. Eventually, I taught them so much that the one day I was standing there with my mom, and she's like, "Those are buds, and the trees must go." <laughs> that's, that's kind of the same as your mother, yeah. Yeah. You, you talked your mother into it. Yeah. Yeah, your no, your parents are completely it. accepting of your absolutely. Wild cannabis use. Yeah, they're now water my weed, so. <laughs> they look up. And Myrtle's mother's got pot plants on her balcony in the old age home. Yeah. Your, your parents are convinced, yeah? Yeah, I, I grew from a long, long time ago. Long time. Then, your, yeah. your father taught you yes. how to do it, and yeah. uh, we're not going to get into any of that. Yeah. <laughs> you've, got to be, you've got to be age 18 to 2000 to hear my fucked up story. Yeah. But tell me, guys, of all <laughs> the shows, why a show about weed? Well, I suppose it's probably, I mean, it's always been a passion of, of both of ours and we really wanted to get the word out and sort of spread our message. I mean, we do have a, a growth store and we need to uh, make, a, uh, make our way through life. Okay. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, it just happened to be that our store was selling grow equipment and we provided weed consultations and cannabis information. We figured we might as well answer some of the questions every Friday on the show. <laughs> and, and we're both passionate uh, podcast listeners and we are like mm. we both, you know, eat up a whole lot of on internet content. And we, we actually got invited in the in sort of the early days of being in business together. We got invited uh, by a film school in Cape Town. No idea how they found us. <laughs> Andy got a mail. He's like, we're going on TV. <laughs> and I was like, no way are we going on TV. <laughs> it wasn't a mail from Smokey <laughs> <So we> got... <laughs> Joe. <laughs> and we rocked over at the, the school of, uh, of filmmaking and we were sort of at a table, a desk with some water and in front of us were like 40 film students all super eager to just like eat up information we chatted to them for a good two hours went, went back uh, about I think about a month later and, and, and filmed, a, filmed an episode and afterwards you know we were just chatting and we were like we love media so much so it was such a fun experience we're both pretty tech savvy. Let's see what we can do ourselves. <laughs> so that, and a week later, a week later, we did our first episode. Nice. Legend. That's, nice. You know, that's the only way to do it is to just start and tune it as you're going on. Mm. I don't know whether you yeah. saw any of the early days of the Hotbox show. We're, we're not... 
they're there. Um, some of them are pretty much un unwatchable at times, mm -hmm. but we just plug away at it. <laughs> Cringy sometimes, Alex. And, it, and yeah. like, you know, telecommunications have got better in the last couple of years. Yeah really, and the equipment for doing it, and we run the whole of the hotbox off everyone's phones. We don't have any camera equipment. We're just using phones. So it's amazing oh. what, how, what you can do with so little in the end. Mm. So what, exactly. what's, your, what's, your, what's been your favourite show so far? Who was the person, who was the guest that made the most impression on you so far? <laughs> our, our biggest our biggest episode in the early days to sort of point towards what we you know we were a bit unsure we had quite a few guests and then when Shaw contacted us to come on that was probably the first big milestone <laughs> milestone for us hey Shaw <laughs> <laughs> we Andy Andy and I was super it was it was I had approached everyone else and then you know we had finally got approached by someone to come on the show and I was like you know maybe we are actually making a bit of a bit of an impact but i'd probably say maybe the last the last sort of two three episodes we sort of found out we started to find like a nice rhythm and okay. just the dynamic between andrew and i you know so but i think just the more recent episodes because we've got it into a place now that you're more comfortable with, mm. with every, every week's better than the last <laughs> <laughs> you become a little less self-conscious yeah, well, yeah. Tell, is, where is that room where is your uh, where's your studio is it attached to somebody's house <laughs> <laughs> it's attached to my house. <laughs> no, I don't want to say too much. No, okay. No, no, no. It's in the Matrix, just like us, Oaks, exclusively in the Matrix. <laughs> Ask the questions. So yeah, no, what no, are you guys no. smoking on at the moment? Oh, uh, we've got, I'm struggling to actually get it lit, but we've got some uh, strawberry okay. amnesia. It's pretty nice. <laughs> Greenhouse <laughs> grown, uh, quite dank. We, we were marginally unprepared. We had like an admin day, so. <laughs> <laughs> And what do you? What's your biggest challenge every week to do your show? What do you What do you see is the biggest hurdle that you have to get through every week? Oh, it's, well, I think the big one is that it's every Friday, mm. <laughs> so it's uh, that's six thirty to almost like eight thirty. Okay, and the, the prep time before, so that's every Friday night. So we've missed a lot of uh, important parties and, and get to it. <laughs> <laughs> and also also that like we have the we have the grocery store which is operating you know every day of the week we have orders to go out so the podcast itself is nearly like a full-time job is booking the guests making sure everyone arrives mm -hmm. making sure the studio is ready so sort of friday comes and it's, it's a lot of the time crunch time no i can relate to so, Dean, tell me, that, do you regret having started smoking weed at 16? Uh, uh, yes and no. I think I maybe did start a little bit early and, you know, I, I have regrets about that. But the, the journey for me has been such a large part of my life. So, um, would you let your kids smoke at that age? No, I probably, I probably, probably wouldn't. Where would you draw the um, line? 18? 18. Yeah. Would you give yeah. them, would you let them Eight, drink beer? We know about it. Would you let them drink like beer? That. My dad let me drink alcohol when I was like 14 or 15. Yeah. Would you let them drink alcohol at that age then? Uh, no, no, probably not. And also, I also, I also started drinking quite early and I uh, regret <laughs> that as well. So I would definitely would. I think 18 is the prime age. You have so much stuff to do beforehand. You know, yeah. it's 30 to your sport. The thing is, yeah. Like anyway. mm -hmm. It's, it's, it's fine to end. I think I'd educate my children about cannabis. It obviously would be a part of our lives, but, you know, probably teach them about growing and it would be something cool to wait for, you yeah. know. But yeah. that's but that's what you say. All kids have their own agendas anyway. Yeah. Teach them to grow it first so that they do appreciate it when they, when they start to smoke it. And, and teach them about what it is so that if they do use the plant, that they do it responsibly because knowledge mm. is, makes you responsible. Mm. And like the meme yeah, says, like, like, the, like the meme says, it's not peer pressure, it's just your turn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be a hater. <laughs> well, uh, super cool talking to you from Cape Town, guys, because um, personally for me, it was quite a bizarre thing to see you guys up and running for the first time on the show, in passing, going through the feed. And there's, these, there's like a couch two chairs, a coffee table, and some shit on the walls. And forgive me for thinking that, fuck, you know what, that looks kind of... 
Anyway, I got <laughs> over. I got I'll over. I, I got that. over all of that quite quickly, and I've watched you develop, and and we know what it's like. Yeah. Fifteen minutes before you go live, um, detect it's a zone of no. You think you've got it covered, and some shit will go down that you haven't got it covered. Yeah, we still do catering and have a bribe before every show as well. Yeah, we've learned. Yeah. I, I can't do ten dabs without prego rolls. Yeah. <laughs> so there's your Friday night party <laughs> advice. Andrew, I'm sure we could learn quite a few things from you guys because we always have the Otherwise. heaviest munchies after the show. Yeah. Eat beforehand. <laughs> Eat before. <laughs> and and healthy, fruity snacks. It's a lot to... It's yeah. a lot, it, it's Not a, chips because they crunch a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Let's do one now. Let's do one now just for the oaks. Good. <laughs> yeah. Is yeah, it? Yes, it is Oaks, well done. So, yeah. I've, I've got one last question for you, Oaks. I hear you've got the grow shop. Yeah. Would you sell grow gear to a 10 year old? Would you? Oh. <laughs> yes. Why, Why not? Why not? Who are you, you to judge that? What are they growing? Actually, so you're not yeah. asking me, you're asking these guys. <laughs> <laughs> I, if I'm getting I too deep because I'm too high, it's cool, no pressure. But I, I guess it's part of the theme, you know? Yeah, I, I think if they wanted to buy some grow gear, I mean, yo, they were, I, I grew other vegetables before I grew weed. Yeah, um, like exactly. Yeah. They're like indoors. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so you said the lighting out with three gavs and some freedom forms. <laughs> Grow some tomatoes, my boy. Yeah. Yeah. Indoors. Prove it's like your proving grounds. It's like eight, your proving eight grounds. Eight foot courgette in the middle of winter. Yeah. <laughs> you make sure you feed us, boy. That's brilliant. <laughs> we do try to screen our clients though, and, yeah. and sort of we will do quite, we quite attention to detail. So like mm. if stuff isn't like if, if people are in, like you know seeming under age or or maybe like acting slightly you know I don't know mm. not so cool, definitely don't just accept the sale. You know, there's, yeah. a, you know, there's a lot of times that people are like, especially if they're acting weird about payment and stuff. I mean, if you <laughs> if you don't have internet banking, you're probably not 18 years old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, who knows, dude? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> who knows, actually, that's a blanket statement. <laughs> Retract. <laughs> Sorry, bro. <laughs> so you say we can check out your site for Grow Gear. I see you've also yep. got an about us, uh, a frequently asked questions. Guys at home, we'll update the link. It was very last minute this, but we'll update mm -hmm. the link for the Oak site and that as well. Uh, but we can find you where we can find you on YouTube. We can find your website anywhere else. On Instagram, also marijuana underscore SA, uh, YouTube, and the website. Those are our main platforms. We are building a Patreon, but that's still early days as well. <laughs> something nice for content creators. And then we don't just do the, the, the podcast. We also yeah. do informational videos, some funny videos as well. So we, nice. we're, trying to, we're trying to develop the, the YouTube sort of as our main our main. Model. And you're on Twitter. And yeah, we are on Twitter as well. A lot of the stuff we post on Instagram appears on Twitter and some original stuff as well. And what what are, what's the logo on the caps? On the caps you're wearing, what's the logo? What's the? Oh, <laughs> this is one of our suppliers. It's Canuck Seeds. Oh, I yeah, see. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you seed sellers as well in the grow shop. Agreed. Yeah. Canuck Seeds, really? Yes. Nice. I thought okay. Canuck was a racist word. A Canuck or a Canadian? <laughs> yeah. Canuck is like not very nice word for a Canadian. Okay. Oh. oh. I, uh, I, I just really like them because there's a great grow channel online called Mr. Canucks Grow, and he okay. he does some really interesting yeah. videos, and that's oh, okay. sort of why I'm a fan of the of the brand. And if it's they, a surname, it won't be a racist no. word. Yeah, but it's, it's not very rude, but it's it's slightly derogatory. You can okay. just use it. <laughs> Are there any other weed shows that have inspired you, Oaks? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Are there any other weed shows that have inspired you, Oaks? Uh, you right, guys are yeah. our main inspiration. I've obviously <laughs> been a fan for quite a long time. I also like the DQ Central show a lot. Yes. And then oh. besides that, um, I actually haven't been a massive weed podcast listener. I've, I've traditionally listened to like a lot of other media. I really like Tim Ferriss. That's actually what inspired me mm -hmm. to go yeah, into Tim e Ferriss. into our own kind of business. And I mean, to be honest, we've been absolutely so busy this year. <laughs> We're not getting much time <laughs> to do anything, but <laughs> it's true. If you're in, if you're involved in the cannabis paradigm, it's busy. Huh? It's busy. There's stuff Very, going yeah, on. There's yeah. so many different permutations and so mm. many things that could happen if you work at it. And it's a long game, man. Eh? It's definitely yeah, a long, it's a long game. game. 
the whole and it's business, all about the, the, thing. the whole business yeah, about those Lesotho licenses. It's only like two years in. This is a long game. It's all the teething problems of all mm. the egos out there. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. Cool. Well, it's been great catching up with you uh, in person, guys. Finally. Um, Myrtle <laughs> and I are going to be spending time in Cape Town backwards and forwards till the end of the year. So let's uh, try and hook up in your studio there for Myrtle and I. I'll, I'll, I'll look at the diary and see how it works out. I'll get to you offline and find out which suburb this, this aforementioned... <laughs> studio <laughs> on the side of the house is if we need to be blindfolded if we're in the uber or anything we fully understand i know where you live well thanks for joining us on the hotbox show what we do every week now courtesy of the rest of the crew is chop it all up into little segments and put it on the Duck A Couple YouTube channel. So there will be a clip of you as guest of the Hotbox Show, episode 107. Big up, guys. Through that camera there. Awesome. Thank you so much, guys. Bye. Sweet. Nice connection, gents. Thank really you. Nice. Yeah, really yeah. nice. Really yeah, nice, guys. Smooth. Yeah, let's, let's, um, let's take a breath and gather ourselves before we get high and give out some, and give out some high fives. Yes. High fives to the Oaks from Marijuana SA. Thank you for being on the show. Go, go, go check out <laughs> Crow Gear and Kif content. You know, I'm so grilled off this dog, this dead dog. Dead dog. <laughs> dead dog. Dead dog. Dead dog. I was smoking this dog all night last night. Uh, uh, mm. So yeah, please go check them out for Crow Gear and Kif content as well. It's so inspirational just to see South Africa stepping up because we've got a lot of culture to be proud of. Yes. yes.